We're sitting in the new annex of a house which was originally built in 1971. The client who commissioned this project originally was uh, going to demolish the house, but we took the view that we should uh, renovate and restore it. The timber frame in the annex is made of uh, Douglas fir from Windsor Great Park, planted in the First World War. It was harvested in about 2006 and then bought and machined by a local company. We use surplus timber that we didn't need for the frame for making, for example, solid timber panels for the walls. The overclad on the outside is all in chestnut, which is locally sourced. If you look at the detail of it, you'll see that it's finger jointed, which means that shorter lengths are joined together to make longer lengths, which is a much more efficient way of using the material. One of the benefits of using chestnut cladding is that you don't have to treat it, so the wood is just simply natural without any lacquers or stains. The concrete floors might be more a question for people who are really interested in sustainability, but they have the great benefit of being self-finished and they have an underfloor heating matrix in them which means that they hold a lot of heat so the heating system doesn't have to kick in very often. There are quite a number of roof lights, skylights in this project, particularly in the annex, to maximise natural light. Uh, this house incorporates um, three main technologies. Uh, biomass for space heating, solar thermal for hot water through the summer months, and photovoltaics for producing electricity. The technology we chose for this biomass heating was a Vindhaga wood pellet boiler. It's extremely well designed with predetermined control systems. The solar thermal system has four flat plate panels. The solar thermal provides all of the hot water required for showering and bathing, etc., for about seven months of the year. There is about 20 PV panels providing approximately three kilowatts of power. We used LED and compact fluorescent lighting to minimise the electricity load of the house. Photovoltaic panels actually produce more electricity than the house needs and so there is a surplus that is sent back to the grid. The annex has a sedum roof. It is quite useful from uh, a sort of energy point of view because it slightly dampens down the temperature variations on the, on the roof construction. One of the difficult decisions that you have to make as a designer on projects like this is the relationship between the energy performance of a product and the environmental damage that it creates. So for example, any kind of foam is a good performer, but we're aware of the fact that it ultimately comes from the oil industry. With this particular building, it was possible to use wood fibre because we had the space in the cladding system. I would question the need for so many new buildings. This project proves that you can take buildings which are suffering and turn them into highly sustainable places to live or work. The Hassock Sports Pavilion is a really exciting project. The brief was for an innovative, energy efficient building that made a statement in the park and stood out among the other buildings. The building is a community building. Predominantly it is used for sports, cricket, football, stool ball. The design is around the bounce of a cricket ball, hence the, the roof form, but that's also designed for solar panels, thus the inverted tick catches the southern light. The entire building is wrapped in insulation. The insulation also runs underneath the foundations. The roof is covered in a single ply membrane. It allows excellent levels of insulation to be installed on top of the roof and a good waterproofing layer. What we try and do is seal the building completely and then use a ventilation system to balance that. So the ventilation system allows the slightly stale and moister air from inside out of the building and clean fresh air in. It also retains the heat through a heat exchanger and recovers that warmth. The air source heat pump is an eight kilowatt unit designed to supply hot water for space heating and for showering. A heat pump uses one third of the energy of a traditional electric system. The underfloor heating is particularly appropriate. We wanted a background temperature of say about 17 degrees, but when people start using it, the temperature can be brought up very quickly. The materials used for the internal finishes were uh, identified to be low embodied energy and low toxicity. In the changing areas, the flooring has a high recycled content, which is environmental, but also very robust. 
The building is clad in a locally sourced sweet chestnut. The windows and doors are triple glazed. The timber construction is cross laminated. This means they're going to last a long time and they're not going to warp. We use polycarbonate roof lights to maximise natural light. The design development was very much about cost balanced against energy efficiency.